Dear Harstem, after showcasing you the incredible strength of Hydra Corruptor, I've got another beautiful game for you. At the highest level it's popular to play Hydra Lurker Viper Investor Queen Spore while doing counter attacks with Ultra Link Bane versus Kytos. But because I'm only able to average 350 to 400 APM in the late game, I can't really micro that army well enough. You're, you're not tricking anyone here, Loco. 400 APM? You? Um, <laughs> instead, I've been playing Ultra Hydra Microbial Shroud slash Fungal, and it's been working really well. In this game, I clearly should have switched to Lurkers instead of Ultras, but did he really win because he played better than me? Or is it Imba? Loco. All right. A repeat offender here in Mr. Loco himself. That's kind of interesting. Let's have a look to see exactly what's going on here in this game. As uh, In the bottom right corner spawning as the Blue Zerg, it's going to be Imposter, which I guess is a Loco uh, Smurf account. And in the top left spawning as the Red Protot, it is O. O. Uh oh, it looks like two eyes with uh, eyebrows above it. A little nose in between. So he says he's struggling with Skytals. He has a he has a composition against it. So we already gotta you know we, we gotta give some credit to a local where credit is due, of course, because it seems like he uh, managed to finally stick with the program. Not only did he start growing in size, but also he finally uh, managed to actually uh, keep with a unit comp and maybe. Maybe he can then improve on it. That's of course the best way to always improve in StarCraft is rather than uh, swapping your unit composition around uh, 17 times a game because you don't think it's working, you just try with one unit composition and you can kind of adjust it if you don't think it's working. So he said, hey, hey Kevin, um, here I played, what was it, Ultra Hydra Investor? Uh, I think I should have added Lurker instead at the end. Uh, but can you have a look at it? Or was it imbalanced? And, you know, these are these are fair questions, Loco. We're just going to have a look at it. Is, is Skytos imbalanced? Now, a lot of people struggle with it. We had Ryogan earlier this year who, who struggled with it and complained a little bit. So he even made a video response to the IO. This, that's a first. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about now. We're here to talk about Mr. Loco. Opening up with the standard hatchery. Um, scouting around. Uh, with his first overlords, as any good Zerg would do. So you're gonna see that there was a forge opener, but I think this this probe got pushed away by a drone. Loco is quick on the responses there. So so far, um, I really just want to say good job, Loco. Your opening looks absolutely marvelous. I am a proud Protoss player. I'm a proud content from one Dutch content creator to the other. I say good job, Loco. You're fantastic. Um, so we have the first overlord going in and sees hey. Cannon going up. Cyber core that is about three minutes too late. Hmm, I wonder what this could be. Now Loco, the smart man that he is, rather than checking the second pylon, he decides to just go back. So if you see a cyber core this late, probably the tech is going to go down the moment the cyber core finishes. And at that point, there can't be a stalker out yet because you see the cyber core finish. Now, this is a tip for people who play against people that play bad build orders. Like this, what OO is doing here is a bad build order. But that means you should be abusing that. This overlord should be scouting that Stargate for free because the stalker couldn't have been out yet. So you just go to wherever the second pylon is. You have plenty of time to look for it. And then you can escape to the back of the base. Just a little bit of advice. Not going to be the biggest of deals here. I mean, uh, if, if, if at the level that Loco is at, which is, I think, about 5.2, 5.3k MMR, maybe a little higher even, 5.4, I'm not sure. Um, that level, the moment you see a forge in the wall and you see someone build a straight cannon, you know it's going to be Aertos. And Loco probably knows it's going to be Aertos at this point already as well. We see the Tot open up with a straight Void Ray. And I mean, the Void Ray is just going to get rallied to the Overlord. So Loco is going to get that information eventually. But obviously you'd rather have it sooner uh, sooner rather than later. I like that he's patrolling. He had a fast speed, by the way. Holy crap, 333 his speed finished. He must have pulled in gas. He really cares about getting that speed fast. What you usually do is you rally drones into gas and you get you get your speed like 345, 350. You're going to be pretty okay with that most of the time. But Loco, no, no, no. He's a fast man. He he wants to finish things quick, my friends. He's bang, in and out. He didn't even notice he was there. Um, yeah, so it gets the speed very, very rapidly. Void Ray starts uh, kind of patrolling along the edges of this... Uh, of this map trying to look for perhaps a second overlord local wisely pulls back 
his overlord that was above his uh, main base it's like you know what i know there's a void ray here he's probably going to be going for hmm. double evo chamber okay that's interesting so usually you don't really see double evo chamber because a single void ray isn't necessarily an indicator of like hey i'm going sky toss it could also mean hey i'm following this up with a glaive all in and then double evo chamber is kind of useless you want a road warren against that uh so you, you kind of want to get a safety road warren whenever uh, any every single game actually has a zerg just in case of like some uh, delayed glaive adapt timing uh, loco is gonna get that road warren albeit a little bit late i can i can kind of live with it as we see, this toss very focused on getting this extractor. I'm not sure what this extractor did wrong to him, but um, yeah, look, look, I was going to be like, oh, it's, that's awful. You're, you're going to take that out. I'm just going to take it over here, I guess. And the recall, man, no half measures in this uh, in this game so far. And Loco's actually going to get a scout, and I love this. He managed to uh, hide this overlord kind of in plain sight. And he's going to see, hey, storm, uh, single void ray so far. Uh, did he spot the oracle yet? No, the oracle is over here at the natural. So he sees quick storm, and Loco's response is going to be, "Hey, you know what? I see quick storm. Sure, there's a void ray, but um, I'm just going to be going into range upgrades and probably go into roaches and a couple of hydras from there on out. Maybe keep a couple of queens to get a creep spread. By the way, man, Loco is uh, is, is is actually improving. This is this is not looking too bad. Now I must say this is not looking too bad, but uh, maybe someone else will disagree with it. As I heard, yeah, our new reporter is ready with a, a little bit of the early game review. Um, wh wh what is your name again? Okwol? Okwol. Um, wh wh what do you think so far? Hmm, I think this guy is doing great, whoever he is. And I believe if he loses, it's probably because of imbalance. Back to you, Kevin. Very, very interesting. I feel like I've seen that guy somewhere before, but I can't quite put my finger on it. But if he says it, it, it looks fine and it looks good, then we just got to trust him, right? These these new young reporters there. Lots of enthusiasm in them, and just love to see it. Just love to see it. Continue with the game. 67 workers here for our main man, uh, a loco against the 51. So it's looking healthy. Now, you could say perhaps a fort base would not be a luxury. Or it would actually be kind of a necessity at this point. So even though roaches are good to kind of to kind of build, you still want to know for sure, hey, this is not going to be an actual Skytos follow-up, right? Because if you're just going to be focusing solely on roaches and it is a Skytos follow-up, you could be in a little bit of trouble. So even though at this point it's all looking great for Loco, I'd love to see, yes, this follow-up scout. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of that. I, I think that's good. Follow-up scouts are very, very important. He also keeps scouting with, with this Ling. His creep threat is looking solid. His upgrades are going fast. Man, Loco is on point. If we compare this to uh, to old Loco, man, this, this guy has improved a lot. He's throwing down a Hydra then as well. Um, what is he? Oh. Sends back the Overseer. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Loco. I was just praising you so much. Loco? He's going to put it with his main arm. Are you joking? We need to know if there's air units. There is now a second void ray. Loco's going to go for a pure roach rush against someone that's making more void rays. This is a little bit how the, how the US gets their intel. You know, they kind of get close to the country they want to invade. And they're like, ah, Vietnam looks doable with what we currently have. Um, let's go in. Let's see how it will go for Loco. Loco, of course, a uh, man of big preparation. Last thing he saw was a Templar Archives, and that was only four minutes ago, so that's probably still pretty accurate, right? Walks um. <laughs> face first into a stasis. A couple of cannons, sees a, sees a Templar. Let's see if he tanks the storm with his face as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not too much you can do there. I mean. uh, and, and then the, the Void Rays show up. I was like, ah, wait a second. It's kind of annoying. I, it's two void rays and is the oracle there. I guess I, I kind of do need units that shoot up. So after last time uh, getting Hydra and Corruptors to uh, to beat battle cruisers, this time he decided to go the other way around. He's like, ah, I see his air units. I remember last time B Big Harston told me that I had too much anti-air. Let's try it with just pure roach this time. 
I'm, I'm not a fan of that. And you could say, well, what Loco tried to do here is he just tries to poke with the roaches to see exactly what's going on. But poking with the roaches into a couple of void rays is like stabbing yourself in the stomach with a knife to check if the knife is sharp. Like, sure, you're going to find out if the knife is sharp, but surely there has to be a better way than this. Um, it's Overseer. Uh, stays alive, which I'm, I'm kind of happy about. He's gonna go again. This time there's a couple of Hydras. This is a good addition. He has good upgrades. His supply is good. And his creep threat is fantastic. Let's just pause and zoom in on this. Like, holy crap, Loco. I, I'm not quite sure what he's been taking. I do know that he's from the Netherlands, so you never know what these guys put in their coffee in the morning. But, like, he's on fire, man. There's creep everywhere. It's like seven, what is it? One, two, three, four, five roads of creep. Five creep lanes five bases already sure he's a little bit supply block uh you sure that the, the max isn't as quick as perhaps uh Cyril would have done it but you know this isn't bad this is this is looking pretty good he's moving back moving forward sniping sniping templar left right and center man he's absolutely destroying his opponent here this is this is almost tech textbook i love this local now that's the good news of course for us the bad news is is that loco somehow manages to still find a way to eventually lose this game which looking at the current situation is almost more impressive than sad almost it is probably still going to be more sad than impressive in the end um 10 more hydras on the way well 10 hydras 6 17 18 hydras all right local relax there buddy calm down what do we have i think we already have yeah i saw Pathogen Glenn, so Investor is the next move. He did he did talk about Hydra, Hydra Investor, right? We, we, we did hear him speak about Hydra Investor Ultra. I'm not sure what the Ultras are for, but you love to see it. No, piss off, Rainer. It's not your turn yet. You gotta wait your turn, man. Just sit back and relax, okay? No, no one really cares about your opinion. Go away. Fans, uh, right? Where were we? Um, bunch of hydras. Uh, he said he was gonna go into ultra. He's getting a sixth base. Remember, loco, you beast, you macro monster, you injecting idiot. No wait, you super good player. Pulling the queens. We're going all out here, loco. I am loving it. I'm loving what I'm seeing here. Carapace upgrades. No extra range. That's fine. Ultra cavern. Okay, Loco. Let's do it. The final march. The fi this is like uh, when the trees start hitting the, the tower in Isengard, man. This is about as epic. Except instead of the trees, it's the queens. And instead of Isengard, it's a Protoss base. Instead of cool guys in Lord of the Rings, it's Loco. But... I think it's pretty close analogy-wise. If it's if stasis wars going down, your micro man loco is on fire. Holy crap! I know he's big on coffee, but uh, this can't be just the coffee. Look at that man! It's unbelievable. He's taking out everything. Uh, he's up 60 supply. Sure, the queens was a bit of a wild move. 11 minutes in, he takes down the fort base. Perhaps we could get some target fire on the templar, but. <coughs> I don't even mind all of this. I don't mind any of this at all, Loco. You're playing a fantastic... Take putting him back on three. He's on six. He's on six. We can just go back. Sure, we can chase onto the ramp, but is that really what we want to do? We don't quite know how many storms there is. Okay. Back up, Loco. Breathe in, breathe out. Now, if we... If we evaluate this position... We're a Loco in this, in this case, right? So... That's a three. I'm not sure what he wants. I said, uh, a little bit too much coffee this morning, Loco. Um, evaluate this situation, right? So Loco has seen, I think, two immortals already. He He's seen two immortals, eight Templar, eight, eight or nine Templar, and like five to six carriers, okay? And like a single Archon. This army is largely designed to kill ground this is not an army that attacks well into the air you could say well 
carriers are kind of okay against Aaron. There's a single Archon. If we have like a solid 15, 20 Corruptors here, that's going to be very, very rough. Or even if you start playing with, with like Vipers and pulling them into your Hydras, that probably would be pretty sick as well. The one thing I wouldn't recommend against a guy who's making an anti-ground army is to get Ultras. Because there's going to be Immortals in it. Now, Loco only saw a single or maybe two Immortals, so he can be completely aware of it. But you got to be very careful with these things. I always say you want to stick with the composition, you want to have a plan, but you, um, through the experience, getting better in your plan, you need to be able to be kind of flexible with your plan. you got to uh, make small reactions. Now, this doesn't mean that from Mass Hydra, all of a sudden you start sacrificing all your Hydras just to rebuild 35 Corruptors. No, you kind of want to use the units you currently have and slowly try to trade them out for an army that is more uh, adept at fighting your opponent's army, basically. That's kind of that's kind of what you're aiming for when you're into a, in a, in a late-game situation like this. Uh, I like the Investor edition. It's Microbial Shroud. Uh, what's it called? The, the Entangle? Holy crap. Neural Parasite. This is what happens. Play this game for 10 years, 12 hours a day. I can't even remember the name of Neural Parasite. The amount of units I lost to that spell is insane. But yeah, you, you always got to be a little bit careful there as a uh, as a player that your tech switches aren't too in too quick. You know, you don't want to be like, okay, here you go. Here's 40 Hydras. And Loco isn't doing that. Loco's doing this solid. He's doing, okay, I got my Hydras. I just add in a couple of Ultras. Now, what you want to be doing is you probably want to be setting up a good fight. Um... Or be just a little bit patient. Look, 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 look at what Loco currently has, okay? He has everything. The entire map is his. He is on six spaces. One, two, six, okay? Creep everywhere. He could take this space. He could, he's going to outexpand his opponent like a madman. He has more money in the bank, and he's not been fighting poorly, but he's going to be able to take like two bases of his opponent, three bases of his opponent. It's going to be legit 10 base against four, okay? Now, Locus Micro uh, isn't known to be the best. This game, it hasn't been bad, but in general, isn't known to be the best. But if you can't win with 10 bases against four, perhaps it's just time to switch to a different game. Like, just go play some, some, some casual Tetris or something like that, you know? Just start start beating the, the neighborhood kids in in competitive Pac-Man. But actually, this, those games are pretty difficult. An easier game. Uh, the game with the raccoon, where you have to build stuff. That's more for you. I can't remember the name. It's the scummy raccoon. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, attacking into this... We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, Loco. So, we see two Ultras are almost continuously fighting. They all die because there's like 17 Immortals. The carriers don't actually have that much DPS. They're not the main DPS in the army. That's going to be the Storm and the Immortals. So Loco goes in. He's like, ooh. Ooh. Lost all my Ultras for free. Killed like three Zealots. <sighs> hmm. Six new Ultras. All right. Interesting call here, Loco. Interesting call indeed. I'm not quite sure if this is how it works. This is one of those times where you kind of want to switch something up. And if you want to rebuild Ultras and then wait for your opponent to move out and then fight into him, I can kind of see it more. But you just saw he had like five, six Immortals. He's on four bases. Your opponent isn't going to be the one that's going to be quick at tech switching. He won't really have that much money for that. He won't have the gas. This is pretty much the army. This dude is going to be stuck. He isn't even max yet. Like, this is not looking tight. What you want to be doing here as Loco, probably want to be getting either into some, com some Corruptors. Um, I don't even mind the Lurker call, but at least try to add a couple of Vipers. So you can try and take either Archons, Immortals, or even some carriers into your units. And with Vipers, in theory, you have infinite time. Especially if you have your opponent contained on four bases. And you have access to a potential ten. Um, Vipers can't really die against feedback. So you can heal them. Sure, you're going to lose time. Which is also a resource. But Loco really has plenty of time on his hands. The longer the game goes, the better it's going to go for him. I like this. Quick rotation to the other side. It's kind of smart. Um, I feel like he's also... 
not quite understanding how microbial shroud works. So microbial shroud, for the people who don't know, it uh, reduces the damage by about 50% from air attacks. Now, contrary to popular belief, or at least contrary to locos belief, immortals are not flying units. Um, I have made the suggestion multiple times on the Blizzard forums, but um, so far no reply from uh, anyone at Blizzard. Um, this means that Microbial Shroud does absolutely nothing. As Ultras are mainly going to be attacked by the Immortals and get their main DPS from the Immortals, perhaps don't cast it on the, the Ultras and just use your Investors for, uh, for, for, for Neural. This is like... Uh, to a man with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. And for Loco with uh, Microbial Shroud, every unit looks like an air unit. We can we can count this as a, as a 7 out of 10 joke. Uh, it wasn't my best. Not my best work. But yeah, you, you probably just want to be working on your Neurals. Um, it, there's really not that much air damage, especially because this guy is on somehow on plus 1 attack while you have plus 3 carapace. Like... I don't think the carriers are going to be the real issue. Um, and, and this is really the the painful thing in this game for me, is that this isn't really Airtos. Loco isn't dying to carriers. Not really. He's losing to a ground army. And ground armies we know how to deal with. We can, we can build lurkers. We could play Broodlord Corruptor against this. But perhaps we shouldn't be playing Microbial Shroud against the Ground Army Loco. I am not sure what this Microbial Shroud is. But God, I'd love to hear what this was for. This is what... I, sometimes you see Tosses storm their own units. This is this is like Loco th thinking it's a fungal. It's like, ooh, look at this big orange fungal. They said a couple of good fungals by there. It's not a bad fight. It's not a bad fight. Some debatable decisions, but not a bad fight. I can I can kind of dig it. Now, there's a lot of storm here. We have a lot more Hydras on the way. Because uh, 36 Hydras wasn't enough yet for a local. He's like, I see there's about 35 storms left. Is there any way I could play into my opponent's hand more? Yes, he tells himself as he presses down the Hydra key uh, for the next five minutes. Loses the hatchery, literally just gets stormed. Please note that these carriers aren't actually doing that much. These carriers are not the ones dealing the main damage. Do not forget that. This is not a loss against Airtos. This is a game against ground. With three support six supporting carriers, seven supporting carriers. That wasn't really the issue. Now Loco kinda has been building up up this entire bank all game long so for the past eight minutes he's been building this bank now that he needs to spend it hey he's lacking some larva because he's about to lose absolutely everything and maybe some static defense would have been wise to if you ever lose a fight with your invincible composition that perhaps you would be able to delay your opponent a little bit and we just see him die to storm this guy's just bummer what is actually <laughs> <laughs> oh, loco. Oh, loco. Oh, loco. Oh, loco. Loco, loco, loco. We could talk for a very long time here, loco. About how, sure, you had good creep spread. And yes, you took many bases. And sure, the opponent perhaps didn't play as beautiful as you did, but your opponent also didn't walk into the same choke three times with Ultras. Your opponent also didn't try to counter Immortals with Ultras. Your opponent didn't think that 47 Hydras was a good call against 12 Templar. So that can only lead me to one conclusion, Loco. So basically, Loco, what I'm trying to tell you is that what is this? Let me answer this. Hello? Who is this? Hello? What's up, idiot? Rainer? Yeah, this me. What the hell was this? Well, I mean, it's just, it's just a replay with, with Loco. I mean, the late game doesn't look that bad. I mean, sure, Loco played well, but 
the Toss also did some nice moves. The, the late game isn't that favored for Toss, right? What do you mean? That was super one-sided. Loco did everything he could. He was clean, 100%. I couldn't do any better. Like, this was great. Toss late game is absolutely nuts. I was just about to tell Loco that he sucked. Like, what, what, what's wrong with you? This is my show. Piss off. Just leave, man. What the hell? What do you mean he sucks? Just leave. This is my show leave? now. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to go? Yeah, just leave. What the hell? I told you. It's my show. Leave, oh. just leave, man. Leave. What's up, guys? Like, I'm here to tell you, Loco, that was completely imbalanced. I get you 100%. Like, uh, I couldn't see that. Like, my eyes are bleeding. Like, you did everything you could. Good job, Loco. Protoss is just broken. Hello? You're here, Kevin. He actually left, guys. So, yeah, I, I was telling you, like, uh, yeah, he did everything he could, honestly. Like, I feel him 100%. Like, since since uh, the, the late game buffs and everything and the Zerg nerfs, this is uh, completely one-sided. Like, uh, Loco, you're a beast. Don't worry about the comments, man. You got it. Hello, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and yeah, just uh, whine a bit more so maybe we, we get the one guy at Blizzard to buff us a bit. Yeah, it's a bit sad, honestly. See you guys. Subscribe.